So today I'm going to actually talk about the Winklevoss twins, or the Winklevi as we know them. Um, and it's weird to me speaking about the Winklevoss twins. So ten years ago I wrote Accidental Billionaires, which became the social network. And at the time, I could never have guessed that the people I'd be talking about years later would be the Winklevi. They were the bad guys in the story, right? The big jocks, six foot five, identical twin Olympic rowers. Um, they were the guys I described as if this was an 80s movie, they would be chasing the karate kid around the gym in skeleton costumes, right? Um, they were the bad guys to Mark Zuckerberg, who was the good guy in that story. And that's where I thought it was going to go. But things have changed dramatically since then. I want to go back a little bit and tell you how I got to the Winklevi twins. So the social network started randomly by an email I got at 2 in the morning from a Harvard senior who said, my best friend founded Facebook and no one's ever heard of him. Uh, I had heard of a guy named Mark Zuckerberg, but I'd never heard of anybody else. So I went out for a drink, and in walks Eduardo Saverin. Eduardo looked like Andrew Garfield, like the guy in the movie, except not quite as good looking, and he looked like he'd been kicked a few times. <laughs> Eduardo was very sad, and he started the conversation by saying, Mark Zuckerberg fucked me. As a journalist, I had to say, tell me more. <laughs> and he proceeded to tell me this crazy story. Two best friends met in an underground fraternity at Harvard. They weren't good at getting girls. Mark went on a really bad date. After the date, he went home, got drunk, hacked into Harvard's computer servers, pulled up pictures of every girl on campus, and made a website where you could vote on who the hottest girl at Harvard was. He got in trouble, almost got kicked out of school, and caught the attention of the Winklevi. Now, they were the big jocks on campus. They were the cool kids. They were working on their own website called the Harvard Connection. They had a problem. They didn't have anyone to computer code it. So they hired Mark Zuckerberg to be their nerd. Now, Mark didn't think much of them. He didn't really want to do their project, but he liked hanging out with the cool kids. So he led them on, then blew them off, went to his friend Eduardo and said, Eduardo, if you put up some money, I need $1,000, you can be CFO. I've got an idea for a company, and you can have 30%. Eduardo put up $1,000, the greatest investment in the history of the world. <laughs> Mark then builds Facebook, launches it. It takes over Harvard within a week. It moves from school to school to school. It gets to Stanford, where it catches the attention of Sean Parker. Sean Parker was the cool kid of Silicon Valley, always wore Armani, but had an EpiPen in his pocket because he was allergic to everything. He was the kid. He founded Napster in his high school uh, uh, time, then created a company called Plaxo, which he got fired from when he was caught allegedly with cocaine, and then he became first president of Facebook until he was caught allegedly with cocaine. But anyways, <laughs> Sean loves the idea of Facebook. Him and Mark turn it into something huge. Eduardo realizes he's being left behind. He freezes the bank accounts of Facebook. So they invite Eduardo out to California. He sits down in a room full of lawyers. They hand in some documents. He thinks they're his lawyers, so he signs the documents, diluting him to zero. The Winklevi twins, who are rowing, you know, as they always are, notice that they're not a part of Facebook, and so they sue. Eduardo goes back to Boston, realizes he's not part of Facebook, and he sues. And that's where I came into the picture. Eduardo wasn't supposed to be talking to anybody. He had come to me with this Machiavellian plan that by talking to a journalist, he could force Facebook to settle. I didn't find out this till later, but he never wanted a book to be written. But I thought this is a great idea. I wrote a 14-page book proposal, sent it to my agent. It landed on the internet on a site called Gawker. It doesn't exist anymore. They printed my entire book proposal, which I'd never seen before. So that day, a bunch of crazy things happened. Facebook settled with Eduardo for $5 billion. The top of the settlement agreement says, you may never speak to Ben Mesrick again, <laughs> because they were trying to stop the book. So Eduardo cut off all contact with me. He broke up with his girlfriend, because it was my wife's best friend. And then he moved to Singapore, never to be heard from again. <laughs> now, I understand. For $5 billion, none of you would ever speak to me again, <laughs> right? My parents would have to think twice about speaking to me again. <laughs> my wife would have to think three times. But Eduardo disappeared. And I thought, that's the end of the story. Well, Aaron Sorkin saw it online as well, got very excited, and said, I want to write this as my next movie. David Fincher saw it online and said, I want to direct this as my next movie, which is all great news, except for I hadn't actually written the book. Locked myself in an apartment in Boston. I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I handed chapters to Aaron Sorkin as I went. It turned into The Social Network. Phenomenal. Now, I thought the story ends there, but it doesn't, because a year and a half ago, I was sitting at home and I read the New York Times and there was a title of one of the articles and it says, Winklevoss twins are the first Bitcoin billionaires. 
Now, I had heard of something called Bitcoin. I wasn't that into it. I thought it was something kind of boring, very mathematical. I think the word blockchain is the worst word ever invented. <laughs> I mean, it's a horrible word. It makes you want to throw up. But the fact that the Winklevi twins were suddenly billionaires kind of blew my mind. So I called them up, and they were gracious enough not to beat me up. And I went and met with them. And they told me this incredible story. And it ends right where the social network, it begins right where the social network ends. So they were involved in this settlement with Zuckerberg. It wasn't going well. Zuckerberg didn't want to give them anything. So finally, Cameron Winklevoss said, why don't we just get into a room with Mark? We'll sit down. We're three college kids. We'll talk it out. So they told the lawyers that. The lawyers went to Mark. Then the lawyers came back and said, Mark says OK, but he has some conditions. And they were like, well, what are the conditions? Well, it turns out Mark was afraid they were going to beat him up. <laughs> this is true. So Mark put across this rule that only one of them could come into the room, <laughs> as if one Winklevi couldn't beat up Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so the meeting took place in a glass-walled room in the center of a law firm surrounded by lawyers. It was Mark and Cameron. They talked for a while, and then Mark settled. He gave the twins $65 million. The twins were not happy with this number, and instead of taking it in cash, they took it in stock. So when Facebook IPO'd, they became worth 500 million, a lot of money. So they decided they would become Silicon Valley investors. They went out to California and tried to invest, and nobody would take their money, because everyone's end game in Silicon Valley is to sell to Facebook. And Mark will not buy your company if the Winklevi are on your spreadsheet. So the Winklevi went to Ibiza to party, because that's what one does. And they were on the beach in Ibiza, and a guy walked up to them and said, have you guys ever heard of Bitcoin? And they had not. Bitcoin had just been invented. This was 2010. Bitcoin was invented by a mysterious guy calling himself Satoshi Nakamoto. He probably wasn't Japanese. He probably wasn't one person. And he vanished shortly after, never to be heard from again. He put on the web a white paper which described a form of virtual money. What that means is money that I can send to you the same way I send a text or an email. Similar to Venmo or PayPal, but there's nothing in between us. There's no bank, there's no government. I can literally send you a dollar. Now, this is really an innovative idea. The truth is we live in a digital world. All money is already digital. When you go to the bank and you put $100 into the bank, they don't keep $100 in a safe somewhere. It actually turns into ones and zeros instantly and goes digital. So this just cuts out the bank. The value of it is only what we agree it's worth. So if I agree it's worth a dollar, it's worth a dollar. This is very similar to gold. Gold actually has no intrinsic value. I mean, it's shiny, right? But that's all it has going for it. We don't really use gold. And so Bitcoin is like gold you can carry around on your phone. So the twins liked this idea a lot. And they liked it so much, they bought 1% of all Bitcoin. They put their money and they bought 200,000 coins at $7 a coin. That's what it was at the time. Then they went around the world and started to promote, promote Bitcoin. Well, something crazy happened in 2013. In 2013, a small island nation called Cyprus went bankrupt. This country is part of the EU, but the EU decided they would not bail them out. So instead, in the middle of the night, the government went to everyone's bank account and took 50% of everyone's money over 100,000 euros. Just took it. So everyone woke up in the morning with half their money. You know, we're all worried about uh, a 2% tax on billionaires. This was a 50% tax on everybody over 100,000 euro. Now, all these rich people in Cyprus realized, I need a form of money that isn't something the government can just take or a bank can just take. So they all turned to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin went from $10 to $100 to $1,000 to $10,000, which is where the Winklevi twins became worth $2 billion in Bitcoin. Now, the story gets even crazier there because it doesn't end there. The conflict between the Winklevi and Mark Zuckerberg continues to this day. The Winklevi launched a company called Gemini. Gemini is a exchange in which you can trade cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Well, not to be beaten, about six months ago, Mark Zuckerberg launches something called Libra. <laughs> Libra is a form of cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Now, I think it's way too much of a coincidence that Zuckerberg launches a coin called Libra after the twins launch a company called Gemini. But this just shows you what's going on here and what kind of a person Mark Zuckerberg really is. <laughs> and so in closing, I feel very strongly that lightning doesn't strike twice. The Winklevi twins weren't part of two revolutions by accident. 
They're not just the dumb jocks from the movie. They're not just the guys in the skeleton costumes. So I really feel like with The Social Network, we got Mark Zuckerberg exactly right, and we got the Winklevi twins exactly wrong. Thank you. <laughs>